Hey guys, um, today we're going to take a look at the, um, well, the US release of the uh, ASUS uh, BTF format. Um, some of you may have already seen the Project Zero by MSI, which is the same concept. And there are cases coming out uh, from every vendor, uh, Thermaltake, Fractal Design, I believe. Actually, maybe not Fractal Design, but Lian Li will have a version of their OE11 that is compatible with um, what ASUS likes to call uh, BTF. Uh, what is BTF? BTF is the concept of putting all the connectors behind on the rear of the motherboard uh, rather than the front. Um, and ASUS is unique in that the GPU, also now the power comes directly from the motherboard and no longer will you connect a 16 pin or 8-pin, whatever it may be. Uh, as of right now, there's only two, um, I guess, BTF GPUs from ASUS. One is the 4070 Ti Tough in white, and the other is the 4090 Strix. Uh, that is not available yet. Um, it was shown at CES, but I don't believe that is available soon. Um, maybe sometime later. Um, so some of you might have seen this already from like ASUS UK, ASUS Taiwan. But aside from that, today we're gonna to take a look at the GPU itself, the 790 BTF Wi-Fi from ASUS, uh, and the GT302 Tough Gaming, uh, which is a BTF case from ASUS. Of course, this case also works for a regular standard ATX, and we'll get into that. Um, I have not taken a look at any of these, so we'll be looking at them together. Um, I will be doing a build in this case, uh, probably the cleanest water cooling build you've ever seen. Um, trust me on that. Uh, and when I complete that build, I'll have better things to say in terms of the case, in terms of water cooling support. But right now, I'm just going to take a look at it and kind of guess at it. So if I may say something that's not 100% accurate, remember, I'm looking at this for the first time along with you. So let's start with the case. Um, Right off, I can tell you this case is very well ventilated. Uh, I'm gonna take off the panels. So let's take a start at that. First off, I will pull off the front glass panel and you will see that this is just tempered glass with a white border. Nothing special to see here. Uh, as we move forward, I'm gonna pop open the front. And this is all clip on guys, no screws. Uh, this feels like steel. Um, it does not feel like aluminum, it's a little bit too heavy pretty short steel. And you'll notice that there's a filter behind here. Uh, this filter, if you'll notice, is also pretty smart. Uh, you can you just pop it up, right? All right, so popping off the filter, you can see that it also is designed in a way that it blocks air uh, from the sides of the fan. So therefore, concentrating airflow exactly where the fan is. Uh, for you guys that don't realize, uh, when a fan is spinning here like this, it's pulling in air from left and right, not just you know, through the center, there's nothing gets pulled through the center. And this kind of directs that airflow a little bit, which is pretty cool, right? So it comes in and it spreads out, but it's pretty cool. Um, right off, also on the top, you'll notice there's some design language that seems new to me. Uh, I normally do not purchase a bunch of tough items. So, you know, uh, I mean, this is new to me, it might not be new to you. But you'll notice that this kind of uh, rectangle grid style is pretty much prevalent throughout the entire case. So let's then take a look at the top. All right, so top pumps right off. There's a filter behind the top. You will see that it is magnetic and it's also white, which is nice. So it matches the rest of the case. Then let's pull off the rear panel of the case and you'll see that it is a mesh panel. And you might be wondering, why do I need a mesh panel on the back? Um, looking at some of the documentation from ASUS Taiwan, I can tell you that this fits in the front. Uh, for those of you who don't know, this case has been available in Taiwan for maybe about two weeks or soon to be available. Um, but you, actually, it has been available, I think. You can always see that, you can still see my hand in here, right? So it's still see-through. So if you built your system and put it this way, you can still see it. So this helps you gain additional ventilation, uh, which is pretty dope. I really kind of wish that ASUS would sell the panel separately. Maybe I might want double vented or double glass, right? So hopefully they will do that. But 
ASUS hasn't really been in the market of selling case accessories, so I don't see that coming, but I will definitely make that as a suggestion to ASUS. Um, with that said, once we get the case doors open, uh, a little bit of warning, I will be manhandling this case while I show you guys stuff. So for those that are sensitive to that, just be aware. Uh, there is a lot of ventilation on the PSU, a lot of ventilation on the back. And from the looks of it, from an air cooling perspective, this case is going to be really good. Um, right in the front, let's pull out to the front again. You'll notice that you have USB 3, USB 3, power, reset, headphone, Type-C. All right, so you may be wondering, how come I don't get dual Type-C? Well, this case point is about 200 bucks or lower. At this price point, uh, to expect dual Type-C, kind of um, a little bit too much, yeah? Because you also need a motherboard that will then have dual Type-C. And folks that gen, okay, aside from people that buy Dynamics, uh, most folks that buy a $200 case or lower, tend not to buy five to eight hundred dollar motherboards. I think that's fair to say. I mean, there's obviously there's a niche of folks that spend all the money on the motherboard, not so much on the case. I get that, but generally speaking, that is the case, right? So, in the front, you'll notice the, side, the fans I brought up earlier. These are ARGB fans. You get three of them. You get one in the back, and as typical with the Seuss cases, they are pre-wired for you. So you don't have to do any wire management of your own. So speaking of the back, let's take a look here. Uh, you get two 2.5 and then two 3.5 at the bottom. Uh, that tray is removable. It is removable. So this is removable if you need it to be. I think there are two screws in the bottom earlier when I took, took it out of the box. Uh, I took it out upside down, so I saw the bottom first. Um, you might be wondering, how come I have double grommets? The reason you have double grommets is because you have the grommet for traditional ATX and then you have the grommet for BTF, okay? So BTF, all the connectors are on the back. So once I unbox the motherboard, or we put the motherboard in, this will make sense. So this allows you then to run your cables through this panel right here. If you notice, I pull this aside, you'll see there are grommets here behind this cover in the front. I'll swing it over again. So that means you can still run your traditional ATX motherboard through. So you, it still supports regular motherboards. It's not just for BTF. Um, so if you're not willing to hop on that train or you don't want to buy an MSI board, you don't want to buy an ASUS board, uh, that's an option, all right? So this case is not just for BTF builds. Um, speaking of which, you guys remember the Corsair shifts uh, where the power connectors on the side? Uh, with that said, now this makes a lot more sense because you can run the cables this way to your BTF directory. Before when they had it like, oh, it comes out from the side. I was just like, why, right? So now that kind of works out. Um, let's see what else here. Okay, so let's take a look at the front. All right. Okay, so you have your grommet here for your power, for your GPU cable. Obviously, this is not necessary with a BTF ASUS card, um, but you know, for regular cards, you got grommets, grommets, you got grommets everywhere. Um, obviously, grommets for ITX, grommets for MATX, anything you need, you got. So yeah, and a nice little cable management cover. Um, not much else to say. Okay, so let's move on to cooling. Um, in the front, you'll see that the pre-positioned is 3140s. If you want to do something with 360, you will need to get your own adapter. Um, I have here um, 420 CE. It's a bit beat up. It's an old radiator from EK. Uh, it's thinner than, their, in terms of width, it's not as wide and it's not as long as the current surface generation. But I can tell you that I can definitely, you're gonna have to fit it behind the fans, obviously, if you wanna put a radiator in here. But you can see, um, might be hard to tell, but if I put the radiator on the top of the case, you can see it's the actual, the entire, I don't know if you guys can see this, but it's the entire length of the case. So I can tell you that a 420 is not gonna fit on top because of the end tank situation. Now you might be able to get a 420 AIO on top. Um, that I will have to try. Uh, but I would suggest that, I, I think the top is only meant for 3140 fans, from what I can tell. There's just not enough room for the end tanks 
Um, so I would say if you're going to go with the top of an AIO, use a 360. Uh, from the front, you could definitely fit a 420 AIO. Uh, I'm thinking you might even be able to fit. Uh, okay, so one second. Okay, so these are 28 millimeter fans. There's a 40 millimeter gap here. All right, so I think I just checked that. So if I were to check this, that's about, that's a 40, 44 millimeter gap, right? So 44, if you use 25 millimeter fans, you'll have about 40, 48, all right, 46. So rough estimate, it's not gonna be able to fit like anything thicker than a 40. Um, this is 145 millimeters wide. This is 150 millimeter wide, this gap. So yeah, so I'm pretty sure I can get this in there or something similar, um, but we'll find out. So let's move on to the motherboard. Uh, once I have the full loop done in this case in the future, uh, I can definitely tell you guys more about the water cooling support. Uh, right now I'm kind of just based off of what I can see here. Moving on to the motherboard. This is the Tough Gaming Z790 BTF Wi-Fi. Uh, pricing wise, I do not know the price, but Based on the Asian market's price, it seems to be very similar to current Z790 tough boards with a small premium. Obviously, that makes sense because one, it's white. B, you know, there's got some engineering here, right? Um, Z790, a bit sad. Uh, I'm sure they'll continue this on the Z890. Uh, 1499KS recently launched. Same process as a 1300K. It's amazing that Intel thinks that people will actually care about something being launched four times. But with that said, um, uh, wait for 15, guys. It's a lot closer than you think. All right, let's put it that way. Um, you have the Z790 B760 series CD, right? You get USB with the new. It's interesting why they still include a CD. It was for like, what? Who still has a CD ROM to attach to their computer these days? Um, all right, you get the manual, thin version at least, quick start guide, some really nice looking tough stickers. Uh, SUS web storage certificate of reliability that's tough for you all right so then you get some m2 screws i'm guessing these are pads for the m2s uh, it only says in french collection of plastic recyclation plastic all right anyway uh you have sata ports you know they should come to these in white these should come in white actually um they should make them in white uh you got wi-fi antenna and let's see what else we get here. All right, so we have the board itself. Um, anything else? Nope, nothing else down here. There is a piece of cardboard behind this board. That's new. Um, I haven't taken this out yet, guys. You're seeing it at the same time as I am. So let's just dump this to the side. And here we go. Isn't that nice? So you'll notice right away that uh, all the front panel headers, all the USB is blank. And all of the 24 pin, all that stuff is also nice and covered up. This is so clean, dude. Look how clean this is, okay, you know. Um, and then you have, I'm guessing, you know, I'm, I'm gonna have to refer to the manual or take it down. I'm guessing you guys don't really care about that right now. So let's take a look at the back. All right. So you'll see they protected it because you have all the ports on the back. You have three eight pin, you have one 16 pin, and you, have, you know what? It's not bright enough, is it? One second, guys. All right. Okay. So you have the three eight pins, one 16 pin, uh, USB three, USB C, 24 pin, your RGB headers, your fan headers, your EPS, and you'll see on the bottom you have your SATA. Literally everything is on the back, guys. How sick is that? That's some sick stuff, right? So this leaves you with the cleanest front aesthetic. <laughs> you know, it's just amazing. Um, I'm giddy because it's finally something. Oh, you get Wi-Fi 7 too. It's, it's just finally something new, you know. Um, and that's the most exciting part. I guess I guess you could still fit a backplate, right? But, yeah, I mean, definitely, I guess you can't just plop your boards down on a desk anymore. You should probably just do this. But, yeah, everything's on the back. Um, in terms of, you might be wondering, how does this work? Well, if you plug in the 3A pins, then you don't need to plug in the 16 pin. All right, so you plug in one or the other. You don't plug in all of them. If you plug in the 16 pin, uh, if you guys are wondering what this powers is, 
this power is just slot right here. Okay, obviously this has to move forward a little bit to drop the card in. You'll notice you no longer have the lock and it's replaced by this kind of tabby. But yeah, so this slot is powered by either 3A pins or 116, okay? So depending on your PSU, uh, you plug in whichever one's relevant. Now, I already know what some of you are thinking. Are we really gonna draw that much power from this socket on a motherboard? Uh, yes, why not, right? I mean, think about it. I mean, if you look at a graphics card on the PCB, it's also a PCB, you also have headers soldered on there. Same concept. So we'll find out. I mean, uh, the 4090 Strix, I don't know if that, the, the BTF version, I don't know if that's power limited in any way, uh, but this 4070 Ti definitely does not draw as much juice. So I'm not so concerned. But yeah, so we'll, we'll fi definitely find out. So let's just put this nicely inside. That's just so cool, man. All right, so let's move on to the GPU. Moving on to the GPU. Uh, guys, I apologize the video in terms of brightness is flickering a bit. Um, these are white parts. And the moment goes on to something black, then it looks kind of different. We gotta increase the brightness, right? So um, let me just pop this open. Um, all right, so this is a standard 4070 Ti Super uh, with the PTF. Elsewise, not much new. I'm gonna try to open this box without messing it up. Okay, come on, come on, okay. Ah, uh, whoops, there we go. I can never get these ASUS boxes open without getting them messed up. Technically, I can teach you guys a trick. Uh, if you take a knife and you s slice down this line really carefully, uh, there's a glue behind this and you can just pop up the no box, put it back, and never take the seals off. Um, I know that because someone pulled that on me and not because I was looking for a way to make it look new, just so you guys know. Um, but yeah, so I was trying to keep the box intact, but stuff happens. Uh, all right. So, okay, so this has the tough design. Oh, that's nice. I've never had the white 7900 XTX uh, or the white tough of any kind. So um, this is new to me. Uh, you get the GPU stand in white instead of gray. Um, this is smaller than your 7, uh, 4080 and up tough cooler. Um, we're gonna pull this off right off. Ooh, so much noise it's making. Might have to turn down the sound on this crinkly stuff. All right, so let's, anything else here? Is there a special collections card? Uh, I messed up this box too, ouch. Uh, let's see. Uh, thank you. Oh, here we go. Tough gaming. Um, I don't know if this is the same as a regular, to yeah, it's a regular same. There's no like BTF logo at the bottom. There's not that extra tab. It's not there. I thought maybe, you know, maybe a little Easter egg. Guess not. Um, anyway, so let me just move this to the side. Okay, so crunch this to the side here. Oh, definitely gonna have to mute that in post. It's terrible. All right, so, okay. So looking at the card itself, very lightweight. Um, yeah, it's the smaller, you know, this is the old tough, classic tough size. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, everything looks the same except for this part, right? That's new, okay? So you'll see that the power comes right out of here. And if you're wondering, what about the traditional location? Yes, it's just blank. Um, you can, no solder points either, actually, apparently. Um, but I really kind of wish they didn't leave the gap. You know what I mean? So <clears throat> then it made a new back plate that covered the gap. That would have been nice. Uh, the 4090 I saw at CES, the Strix also has this gap. Uh, I was told they're not going to make a new back plate. I guess the cooling, etc. is just not worth the tooling. Um, but so let's get this plugged onto the motherboard. So there it is inserted onto the motherboard itself. You'll see that that is completely done. So in the case, you should just see this. All right, so that's pretty cool. Um, I'll just press the tab, pick this up, I think. Yeah, okay. So let's get the board into the case. Uh, let's take a look. So the motherboard and GPU is in, and so is that very sweet looking tough Viper RAM uh, to match. And um, yeah, so I was gonna put the IO in, but I figured, you know what? You guys don't need to see that from me. Plenty of people will do that for you. 
Um, obviously, this is the beginning of the schemes. Um, so let's take a look at the back. And you'll see that everything is in the back. Sick. Very dope. Very dope. So, um, yeah. I mean, you can't... <laughs> I mean, it's all nicely laid out for you. I mean, I really don't know. Everything's shorter of a connection. You could use shorter cables for everything. Uh, I think, um, yeah, I mean, over time, I'm guessing for cases that support this, they don't even need these long cables. They could just have some really nice short cables. And I, I would love to see that integration for ASUS where, you know, um, if they know you're selling a whole entire kit, you know, maybe they can come with a variant that has shorter cables. But then again, you know, every time these small customized changes it costs the manufacturer a lot to make these changes. I mean, to us, it's just like, oh, can't you just have a shorter wire? That saves you money, it's less wire. But to go back and then have the validation testing and all that, because you can't just cut the wire shorter and release it. Uh, so small changes often ask quite a bit from the manufacturer. Um, so with that said, uh, I'm going to, you know what guys, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. Uh, I will be using one of those um, tubeless water blocks. So you won't see any tubes in the front uh, at all. Uh, I promise you that. Um, but this area needs to be cleaned up because I'm not, I don't like that. And I think I could definitely make that look better. Uh, may have to, may have to put some holes in this poor case here. But uh, we'll see. Uh, not poor case, but poor case in the fact that I'm gonna drill it. Uh, but other than that, uh, you can see that even if I had just the AIO there or an air cooler, I mean, come on, I mean, look how clean that looks. Um, I, one thing I did notice is that because of all the ventilation on the powers on the shroud itself, if you have your PSU in there, you're going to be able to see all your wires from the top, which is, hmm, I, I, I don't think it needed to be as ventilated. <laughs> I'll put it that way. Uh, yeah, th that's, that's going to be, yeah, that's probably the one downside is that from the top, you're going to be able to see all your PSU wires. So once I have all everything here, you can see the wires. So hopefully they can, you know, in future revisions with this kind of design, have a plastic cover, you know, so that way we don't see all the wires down in there. Um, that, that would that would be a nice touch. And but yeah, obviously, once again, you notice there's no power. Obviously, this is not a card for you to mount a vertical. Um, you, number one, you can't because <laughs> you can't power it then. Uh, so for those of you wondering, are they ever going to make a riser? And my question is, do you really want to buy a riser that feeds up to 600 watts on a Strix? I don't, right? So it is what it is. Um, but yeah, so I'm looking forward to get this hooked up and, and built. Uh, I'm going to try to wrap this one up in two weeks. We'll see. Um, for those of you who don't know, I'm also working on a Hyperion that I posted up. Um, that I posted on a short. Is it a YouTube short? Uh, but you know what? Let me drag it up here real quick. This is the Hyperion I'm posted and it's unrelated to the rest of the video. Uh, I just want to share with you guys because um, I haven't been posting as much. Just been busy trying to do one thing after another. Um, this is a Hyperion that I'm working on. It is Hyperion number one. I say number one because there's going to be <laughs> two more after this one uh, or maybe four. So uh, this one is kind of my base. Why I say base is... I'm doing a lot of CAD work based off of this one. And then that gives me the layout to then change it up for things moving forward. Now you may be looking at this and going, oh, well, this looks pretty much done. You just gotta put in tubing. It's a little more complicated than that. Uh, reason being is I need to redo this bottom distro a bit. Um, I need to wrap this cover up so it looks a little lot sleeker. Um, this thing, I don't like it, so I'm looking into designing something to replace this uh, that's more functional than a screwdriver holder because to me it's not functional um this color right here this is this is a midnight blue it looks so nice in the sun and i really wish i could show it off in the sun but it's kind of hard when it's like heavy empty <laughs> i don't know how heavy it is going to be afterwards but yeah so this is uh what i'm working on i'm excited to finish this up and show you guys uh but this is definitely my out of all the ASUS builds I've done, this is definitely going to be my favorite. Um, one, because, well, it's my first Hyperion that I'm finishing. So, but I will pause this to finish the tough, uh, simply because I take a break from it. Tough is new. So with that said, thanks for watching. And uh, of course, thanks to ASUS for sending over the tough stuff. Um, it was, I figured I will definitely give them something different compared to what other people will be doing.
So thanks for watching. Stay safe and take care.